guys welcome back to my channel today I wanted to share my hair routine with you and show you exactly how I get longer healthier hair you guys have often asked me to make a video sharing my hair tips with you so I thought that I'd do that today my hair is pretty long it's almost at my belly button and I just had about this much cut off my hair a few days ago literally like three days ago so I do feel like I have some tips that could be helpful to you if you're trying to get longer healthier hair my hair hasn't always been super long I feel like in general I do like to keep my hair longer but there have been times that I've been to a hairdresser and they've really chopped a whole lot off my hair Hair. about a year and a half ago I went to the hairdresser and they cut quite a lot off my hair but I have just cut my hair so much since then and I've still managed to grow it out my hair was really really long at the end of last year I cut about 12 centimeters off my hair at the beginning of December and then at the end of January so just like two months later I cut another 20 centimeters off my hair so it just keeps growing and I always seem to have long hair every time I look it's down at my belly button again and I have to cut it again so there are very specific things that I do to get longer healthier hair and I have been doing these things for a long time and I've like they really help so I really did want to share these tips with you let's just get started with the video so my first tip may seem really obvious or it may not I'm not sure but what you eat is really important if you're trying to get longer or healthier hair or both you really need to try to eat healthier food make healthier food choices just like if you were trying to get healthier skin or just become healthier in general. I made a quick list on my phone of foods that I feel like are good for your hair. Some of these are known to be good for your hair and some of them are foods that I like to eat for keeping my hair longer and healthier. If you want to grow your hair, you do need to be getting some vitamins in your diet, but I like to get vitamins from the food that I eat mainly. So things like fruits, vegetables, berries, those are really good for you in general, but they're really good for your hair as well. I like to add things like berries and baby spinach to my morning smoothie. You can also add something like collagen to your smoothie to help to grow your hair out that's good for your hair healthy fats are also really good for your hair so things like avocados and walnuts I really like to eat those to keep my hair long and shiny and healthy and if you want to keep your hair long and healthy you also need to be getting enough protein in your diet so foods like eggs, salmon, almonds, nuts, beans, those all contain a high amount of protein. So that's gonna be good for building your hair and keeping it longer and healthier. I try to eat mostly plant-based, getting a lot of fruits and vegetables in my diet and like whole grains and things like that. My next tip to get longer, healthier hair is actually to trim your hair every six to eight weeks. I know that might seem counterproductive if you're trying to grow your hair but you really want to keep the ends of your hair nice and healthy so that they don't split and they don't get all damaged as I said I just went for a haircut I had a nice amount cut off but you don't have to get so much cut off you can just get a little trim at least every three months you should be going to the hairdresser and you need to be very specific with them about how much hair you want cut off I can't tell you how many times I've gone to the hairdresser and they have cut so much more off my hair than I needed or that I wanted and that's quite upsetting if if you're trying to grow your hair and then just go and like chop a whole lot off it's very upsetting so you want to take a whole lot of photos on your phone to the hairdresser with you of what you want get a whole lot of photos that are similar for reference give them a good example and be very thorough with telling them what you want if you don't want all your hair chopped off but it is still important to go for a trim so as you can see, I've just had my hair lightened quite a bit. My hair naturally is very dark these days. But when I was little, my hair was more this color. And so when I think of myself, my hair is this color. Each year, my hair just naturally seems to be getting way darker. I like to add a bit of lightness back into my hair. I just enjoy it, especially for summer. It's really nice. If you're like me and you really like to add blonde or like brown into your hair, the bleach can be really damaging. Instead of bleaching all of your hair, blonde and having to get it touched up every month or every few weeks what i recommend is getting a balayage so that's what i have mine is quite high up right now but that's fine because it will grow out nicely and it's just going to go from dark brown to light brown or brown to blonde you've still got these nice sun-kissed looking ends so it looks like you've been in the sun a bit it's not quite as damaging and you can wait like three to six months before you get a top up i'm going to be applying bleach to your hair twice to four times a year maybe instead of doing it every single month or every three weeks or something to keep your roots from showing if you really like to put some blonde into your hair that's what i recommend for still being able to have the blonde but being able to grow your hair longer and keep it healthier so my next tip to get longer healthier hair is to be a little bit more aware of the products that you're using on your hair so i just wanted to mention the shampoo and conditioner that i've been using i've been using the brand function of beauty this video is actually sponsored by function of beauty so thank you to function of beauty for partnering with me on this video but just so you guys know i never ever promote any product without using it 
for a good amount of time and I have to absolutely love it or else I will not promote it. But you guys know that I'm really into natural makeup, I'm really into natural skincare. I've tried a lot of the more natural hair care products and there have been very few that I've enjoyed. For actually quite a few years I refused to use normal shampoos and conditioners and I would try and make my own and it just was not, it just didn't turn out great. I'd have really greasy hair. What a lot of you may not know or you may know um, a lot of hair care products, skincare products, makeup products contain ingredients called parabens, sulfates, which are really not good for you. They're really not good for you and they can be very harmful. So Function of Beauty has no parabens, no sulfates, no GMOs, no toxins. It's vegan and cruelty free as well. It is also kind of difficult to find a hair care product that's specifically made for your needs. We all have completely different hair. My hair is very fine. It's also wavy, kinky. It does its own thing. It's very fuzzy naturally. So it's kind of difficult to find and hair care products that are made specifically for my hair. So with Function of Beauty, you can actually customize your hair products and you can make them perfectly suited for you. It's really, really easy. You just take a two minute quiz on their website that outlines your hair goals, your hair needs, and also your personalized preferences. So you can get exactly what you want, exactly what you need for your hair. I've also got a 20% discount for you guys. I always try to get discount codes for you guys. So if you click the link below, you will get 20% off your first order. You can customize them, make them fun. What's really great and something that excites me the most. Yes, I get really excited about hair care and skincare and all that. Um, I really love it. What I really like is that you can customize the color of your shampoo and conditioner and also the fragrance. So I went for dye free and fragrance free because my skin is extremely sensitive, which means my scalp is also very sensitive, as embarrassing as that sounds to admit on the internet. And that's why I use very natural products on my skin. So I chose fragrance free and dye free, which is really great because I've never have never had that option before so that's been really nice and it's made my skin a lot less itchy but most people don't have a problem with that so you can get all sorts of pretty colors so i felt like my main goal with customizing my shampoo was to get longer healthier hair that wasn't so frizzy because yeah i can just turn it into like a frizz ball I know you guys are all over the world, so I just wanted to let you know that Function of Beauty is currently available in the US, in Canada, in Great Britain, the EU, Australia, and New Zealand. So if you're in one of those places, you can give it a try. And yeah, I just really wanted to share that with you because it's really been helping me a lot. Okay, my next tip is to do with brushing your hair, which might sound really basic, but it's really important. So I've just washed my hair, it's wet, and it's tangled. I have not brushed it at all yet so I wanted to show you guys exactly how I brush my hair when you brush your hair especially when it's wet you can do a lot of damage to it um, you can see how not this is how knotty my hair goes naturally so I've got to be quite careful with my hair it's very fine it's very thin but it's not so what I like to do is first put some product on my hair I'm using this Davines all-in-one milk I've been using it for a few years I spray some of that into my hand and I just put it all over my hair. I took quite a lot of the product because my hair is extremely knotty, as you can see. And I do this before I brush any of my hair. This is basically like a leave-in, conditioner, hair treatment kind of thing. What I do is I brush my hair from the down up. So this is very important when you brush your hair. My mom always told me to do this when I was little, so I've always brushed my hair like this. Especially when it's wet, but even when it's dry, you want to start brushing from the bottom of your hair to get all those knots out. If you just put the brush in your hair and you just go like this, you're, you're going to hear all your hairs breaking. Look, look at all these knots. It just freaks me out. So I just go from the bottom and I gently go all the way up. So you can see the bottom is now not free. And you just keep going up, you can go piece by piece. This might seem really, really basic, but this is so important if you want to keep your hair healthy and you want it to grow a lot. This often happens to me when I go to the hairdresser, is after they've washed my hair, they'll sit me down and someone just starts going crazy through my hair. And I always, very politely, I always ask them to not do that. <laughs> I just ask them to be a lot more gentle with my hair and I ask them to brush from the bottom up. Okay, so my hair is finally not free. See, now the brush just glides through it because all the knots are out. It's incredibly important, probably my top tip. <laughs> 
after I have washed my hair, brushed it out nicely, then I blow dry my hair. So I've got this GHD hair dryer, I bought it last year. And now this is very important as well. A lot of people just blow dry their hair like this. I'll do an example. That's an example of what you don't want to do. If you blow dry your hair like that, you're going to end up with wild, crazy hair that you're going to have to straighten more, you're going to have to put more heat on it, and then you're going to be damaging your hair more, it's not going to grow as long and as healthy. You know when you go to the hair salon and they do a proper blowout with a brush? If you know how to do that at home, then go ahead and do that because that's great. But if you don't know how to do that, I'm not good at that. I'll just take my brush and start brushing out piece by piece, and then I'll take the hair dryer and I just blow downwards because the way your hair dries is the way it stays. So if you blow, if you want like straighter hair or just more manageable hair and you blow downwards, you blow dry downwards and then you brush it out and then you blow dry downwards, you're gonna get straighter, more manageable hair that you don't have to apply so much heat to because it's going to, yeah, it stays, pretty much stays the way it dries most of the time. That's what the hair wants to do then. So I just keep pulling my hair through my fingers like this as I because I'm not using a brush because that's too difficult for me. I don't know how to do it. And you don't have to hold it right at your fingers because you're gonna burn your fingers. I go a little bit away. I go like that behind the behind my hand and then I don't put all that heat right on my fingers. And then I will just go back and brush it out from the bottom up. So now my hair is dry and it's actually looking pretty straight and all I've done is blow dry it downwards, brush it out, detangle it and blow dry it downwards which my hair is not, if my hair dries naturally it is not the straight, it goes quite puffy. I do want to do a little bit of straightening. This is my hair routine, this is what I do. I'm about to use some of this Davines Oil Oil. I just do a pump or two in my hand. You don't really need a lot of this stuff, it's quite rich. I just do a little bit of this, mostly on the ends of my hair. It's a great heat protectant and it just makes my hair nice and smooth and fuzz free as well. Again, like blow drying my hair, I try to only apply heat with my hair straightener once a week and what I do is I focus most of this on the bottom of my hair. So since I've blow dried it, it's mostly straight and sleek throughout my hair but I'm just, just really extra straightening it. And I really just focus mostly on the hair around my face which is a little bit shorter and then at the bottoms of my hair. I've asked a lot of hairdressers what the difference is between using a cheaper hair straightener versus a more expensive one. So I've got a GHD hair straightener here, it's a pretty good brand. Basically what hairdressers have pretty much always said to me is that with a more expensive one, a better quality one, you're going to be applying less heat to your hair because with a cheaper hair straightener you're going to want to go over the same places over and over again. But if you've got a better quality one, you're not going to have to go over the same places over and over again. You're really going to go over each spot once, maybe twice. So that is basically my hair drying slash hair straightening routine. I just really do it once a week. And if I need little touch-ups with the hairs around my face or just the tips, then I'll do that with the hair straightener. But I try to keep the heat off my hair throughout the rest of the week and this really helps me to maintain healthier hair that's not so damaged by the heat. So that is it for today's video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope that you found my hair tips helpful, seeing my hair routine, what I do, products I use, everything. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and subscribe to my channel for more videos and I'll see you guys again very soon.